Hello folks, you're very welcome, Cade Me the Foil Sharif. Uh, welcome to another live stream here on driving test tips for the driving test in Ireland. I am Dane Tai, approved driving instructor, and I'm going to be answering your questions, sharing lots of advice with you, giving you some tips for reversing around the corner today. Um, I'll be answering your questions on learning to drive, doing the test, and giving you lots of info and advice. So if you have any questions, or if you have any comments, get them in. Um, my email is on screen there. It's in the yellow writing in the bottom left, danetai at gmail.com. Um, the blue website there uh, below it, www.ndls.ie, that's where you go for all your driver licensing requirements. So if you're looking to um, get your permit or apply for your license, um, and there's a great expiry calculator there because there's a, some people will, will be able to avail of a, an extension on their learner permits and licenses, so check it out on ndls.ie, that's National Driver Licensing Service. The theory test can be booked on www.theorytest.ie, as you can see there as well. Um, you can find out some great links there for um, learning materials like the CD-ROM and the app and things like that there. And if you are looking to apply for your test, if you're looking to manage your driving test application, then do that um, at the website listed at the very bottom in white writing, www.myroadsafety.ie. Anything to do with your driving test, go there. Um, because the RSA are not taking calls um, and I don't think they're answering many emails at the moment as well so anything you want to do in terms of managing or picking a date for your driving test myroadsafety.ie and that can be accessed through the RSA website as well www.rsa.ie so we got a com first comment in there Anna Power hi there a newly qualified driving instructor well welcome to the jungle Anna and your videos are so helpful for me thank you so much for all your fantastic videos well anna you're very welcome glad glad that they can help you they're mainly aimed at learner drivers i suppose as you'll acknowledge but i'm sure instructors can gain as well because i'm always interested in hearing from instructors as well because it's always good to get other people's perspective on things so good to hear from you anna um, and if you have any questions just email me there in the yellow dayntai at gmail.com and best of luck to you and your career as a driving instructor it's a great job it's not a job I do I do so much anymore because I'm doing this and other things but uh, I still do the lessons but not as much as I used to um, but as I said best wishes to you Carmel McGowan hi then should you put your car in gear that's this this is you know straight to the point Carmel uh, just quick hello and then straight down to business I like I like your style yeah that's the way I do the lessons actually I, I usually keep small talk to a minimum um, anyway let's see what you're saying there hi then would you put your car Sorry, let me start it again. Should you put your car in gear when you are parking up tanks? Uh, yes, Carmel is the short answer. So if you're leaving your car, so if you're parking your car, for example, outside your house or outside the shop, and you're about to leave your vehicle to go into your house or to go into the shop, you should leave it in gear. So handbrake up fully, leave it in gear. That means it's more secure so that if the handbrake does fail, which is unlikely, but it could happen, at least then you're... you're uh, the fact that you're in gear is going to give the car extra security okay so yes but if you're in your lessons or a test handbrake and neutral is fine if, if both you and your tester and you and your instructor are in the car like if you're already in the car handbrake and neutral be, handbrake and neutral will be fine then but if you're leaving your car leave it in gear yeah blessing what a great name well good to see you again good to see you too blessing even though i can't see you good to have you here any questions let me know um I haven't gone very far. I, I, I was always here. Maybe you haven't been tuning in. That's probably what you're getting at there. But welcome and let me know if you have any questions. Sean Ostridge, is it? Ostridge? What a interesting name. Test this tomorrow afternoon. Any last minute tips? Um, yeah, Sean. Um, watch this stream for a start. You'll get lots of tips in this stream. Uh, don't drive too slow. Don't overdo the mirrors. Do the, do the mirrors when they're important, like overtaking, changing lanes, moving off, that kind of stuff. But don't be checking your mirrors every four or five seconds because that'll just drive the testers nuts. Uh, don't drive too slow either. Um, and just believe in yourself. Yeah, take it one road at a time. Don't think don't think of it as one big thing. Just think of it as, as 15 or 20 little tests, if you know what I mean. Uh, one road at a time. Okay, blessing there as well. Uh, again, sorry, I watch many of your videos. I've passed my driving class. Great stuff, blessing. So you've proved to be a great driver. You've proved to be, uh, you have your full license. You have your end plates. So glad to 
glad to hear you found the videos useful. That's good news. Uh, well done to you. Okay, so I'm going to get back to the comments there now. Michael Morgan is next when I get back to him. But I want to just start with a few kind of uh, just announcements slash um, information slash tips for you, okay? And the first one I'm going to start with is not necessarily an announcement, but it's kind of a, an unusual email I got from a girl who was doing her test in um, NACE in County Kildare. Um, and the, the test that started, it was an automatic car, so she was doing her test in an automatic car. And believe it or not, the driving tester had to intervene to tell her to stop using her left foot because it's illegal. She was never told um, to use only her right foot when doing her lessons in the automatic car. So she was kind of doing what Walter Jr. did in Breaking Bad. And if there are any, any Breaking Bad fans out there, he was using two feet uh, when Walter was trying to give him a driving lesson in a car park. Uh, so check that out on YouTube if you want to, if you, you'll, you'll find the scene I'm, I'm talking about then. But this girl, God love her, she was using her left foot for the brake um, and then she was using her right foot for the accelerator in an automatic car. Now it's incredibly dangerous to do this, especially if you've, if you've been driving a manual car in your life and you go to automatic because your right foot is generally considered more sensitive, so ideal for the brake and the accelerator, but your left foot not so much, just because the left foot you is using the clutch, so it's a, it's a deeper pedal, so you're more accustomed to, to hitting the clutch a bit harder. Now, you wouldn't come off it fast, but you'd, you'd normally go in on the clutch fairly fast. So, I, I mean, I was very, very surprised to read this email. I wasn't even sure if she was serious at, at the start, but it seems she is. So, just in case you're an automatic driver out there, please don't use your left foot, okay? If you do that, and you continue to do that, the tester may well cancel the test. Thankfully, this tester um, that was testing this girl up in Nason County Kildare said that you're, that is incredibly dangerous what you're doing. It's illegal. Um, try not to do it. Um, she was able to recover anyway and pass her test just by the skin of her teeth, which is a great achievement by her. So just on that one, folks, just if you're driving an automatic car, right foot only, okay? Next one. Um, non-essential tests. People are asking me a lot about when are non-essential learners going to be able to do their test the answer is they already are um at the moment the rsa is getting to them on a first come first serve basis so non-essential drivers are getting driving test dates at the moment based on when they applied now there's not they're not it's going to take them a long time to get get through everyone but they are getting seen to how many i'm not 100 percent sure because the road safety authority the rsa they're not exactly uh, renowned for sharing information and giving updates like a lot of the information I find out is through other instructors like in the Facebook group or something like that or maybe I might see something from a government minister on Twitter or a Google search um, very little of what I what I find out or what I get actually comes from the RSA they're uh, atrocious absolutely atrocious for customer service and for telling instructors anything uh, when something happens in the driving instruction industry, believe it or not, the driving instructors are usually the last to know. Believe me, you, 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 I know that's hard to believe, but trust me, I've been dealing with them that long. Um, you wouldn't believe the stories. Anyway, um, they are eventually getting to non-essential um, candidates. And they will hopefully make better progress as time goes on because there are new tester, new testers being hired. 40 new testers and 40 more hopefully by the end of the summer. Um, new test centres are opening up as well, like for example in Mulhuddard in Dublin and down in Cork as well in Toker and Cholester up in Dublin as well. So like eventually the waiting list will get seen to and will get shorter. Um, speaking of driving tests, in the comment section I welcome any questions you might have, any questions at all, but also don't be afraid to share your, your, um, your thoughts and your experience on the driving test. So if you just did your driving test, whether you passed or failed and you're looking to kind of get another test in, why not share your experience in the comments here so that I can I can learn, I can see what the tester said to you and other learners who are tuned in here as well can also um, learn from the information you share. So don't be afraid in the comments section to share your thoughts, your experiences of the driving test, mistakes you made, things you learned, and particularly anything the driving tester said to you, okay? And as I said, you can, you feel free to email me your driving test report sheet there, dayandtie at gmail.com. But if you are emailing me, please give me some information. Don't don't just email me your driving test sheet 
and then said and then say any tips here then I, I don't know what's going on even if the tester said nothing to you surely you can share a little bit of information about what happened like or where you thought the mistakes were made so email me your report sheet i'll get back to you usually within 24 hours with a detailed analysis but please you know that don't be shy with the information like let me know what happened I, i'm not a mind reader I, I can't guess like you're gonna have mistakes like for observation on roundabouts for example i mean that could be anything like it could be mirrors it could be not looking enough not previewing so the more information you share with me well the, the less i the less mind reading i have to get into okay uh okay let's see next uh topic for an announcement um if you want to apply for your first permit or second permit or, or your driving license you can do so at www.ndls.ie okay not on the rsa website not not on my gov and like that go to ndls.ie and from there you'll be guided into the portal then okay that's the place to go you can apply online if you have a public services card and a verified my gov id okay next one then learner permit extension as i said last week the learner permit has been extended by 10 months depending on the when it expires and depending on the start point but generally speaking there is a there is a 10 month extension on learner permits so even if your permit is out of date today you may still be able to do a test um tomorrow or this week uh the testers will know about it the guardian will know about it check out the expiry calculator on www.ndls.ie in the blue right in there that's the best place to go um to check if your permit is able to avail of the extension okay ndls.ie next point um about still on the ndls all the ndls te te all the ndls centers are open with the exception of two um the one in clifton in county galway and bell mullet which i think is in county mayo i'm not sure, correct me if i'm wrong um so the ndls center in clifton and bell mullet is not open okay they're closed but every other ndls center is open um you cannot do walk-in appointments before all this COVID crap started becoming trendy you were able to walk in and get an appointment um, in the ndls center without having to book uh, but that's not possible anymore due to COVID. okay so you have to book online uh, you can go to ndls.ie there and you can you'll be able to book your slot um to come in and have your appointment where they'll take your photo and take your signature and all that kind of stuff okay so they'd be the main points there now um we'll get back to some comments there now and just the just um first of all before i get back to some comments on screen here i've gone through my email and stuff down there in the bottom left I have some signs there just i could just i could only fit in four signs there um so good to know what these signs mean let me know if you know what the signs mean let me know in the comments section uh you need to know these because there's a very 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 good chance you're going to get asked at least two or three of these signs okay so let me know you'll see the other sign then uh is the paypal sign there just beside number four to the right of number four if you do want to make a voluntary donation you can do that by paypal links will be in the description or in the description to any of my videos Thank you very much if you have. Thank you very much if you're going to. Really appreciate the support, okay? Much, much appreciated. And that's what keeps the channel going and that's what keeps the channel active, okay? Just up above me there, I'm gonna get that get to that um soon once I once I get some comments dealt with here and once I get the driving test report sheet here looked at. Up above here in the green we have some tips on reversing around the corner. Now these are these are just kind of talking points for me um i'm going to give you some detailed tips on how to reverse around the corner how to manage your speed and um, because i know a lot of people will be nervous about doing the reverse around the corner um so i'll get to all those uh, very very shortly and hopefully you can uh get some kind of confidence from that okay so let's get to some comments here now again and then i'm going to get into this driving test report sheet this is a report sheet from a uh, girl who unfortunately failed now she subsequently passed shortly after this but she because she failed this test as you can see here a bit of a mix bit of a mixture it's kind of a fairly spread out between observation and a few vehicle controls there didn't fail by much but again she gave me reasonably good feedback as to what happened there so i'm going to share that with you very soon so hopefully you won't make the same mistakes okay now let's get back to some comments here then and we'll see where we um where we left off uh, a couple more comments and then we'll get into this report sheet so was um what was that chap's name michael morkin wasn't it well then sound 
for the feedback this week. Oh yeah, I thought I recognized. I think I emailed you back there, Michael, earlier this week. You're very welcome. I hope you found it um useful, and I hope it was able to guide you. Thanks for getting in touch, um, Michael. David Dixon, I passed my driving test and on Tuesday, I think, with no faults. That's that's incredible. Well, well done to you. Um, no faults at all. Um, your videos were a huge help. Thanks, Dane. You're very welcome, David Dixon. So big congratulations to you there. Um, passing the test with no faults. That's that's proves you did you did a really 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 good drive there. So congrats to you. Great stuff. Um, but just remember, like, there's still lots to learn. There's still lots of other roads you'll have to drive on in Ireland, around Europe. Um, in America, on the other side of the road, if, if ever you do that. Uh, motorways, for example. So, that's a great achievement, but always remember, the ne the learning never ends. Blessing, if anybody wants to pass driving test, watch this video. Thank you very much, Blessing, for your uh, support and for your nice comment. Appreciate that. You are a good teacher. Well, that's, that's nice to know. Thank you very much. Um, I'm glad to be able to point you and others in the right direction. Someone just donated five euro there. Um, I will get down to that in a second. If I am I able to see that now? I'm just kind of checking here. No. Uh, but thank you very much, whoever gave that uh super chat donation there. Much appreciated. I'll 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 get down to it in a second once my comments um scroll down. Really appreciate it. Um, who's next in? Damien Damien Kladiev, I think. Kladiev. Have my test on the tenth of August. Then you have. Mention if you fail all the theory questions, it's only one mistake, grade two. If you're nervous about the theory or road signs, try not to worry too much. Even if you get all the questions wrong and all the road signs wrong, the most you can get is one grade two mark, okay? If you get one wrong, it's a grade one. If you get two wrong, it's a grade two. Like like on this sheet here, uh, this person got two uh, grade one marks, as you can see at the top there. But that's all. So don't worry too much if you're weak on the theory. Just uh, do your best, answer the questions and road signs as best you can. And then once it's over, forget about it and move on, okay? But the most you can lose is one grade two mark, that's all. Dimitru Printia, I think it is, hello to you. Katie M, hi Dane, at one point of my test route, there's a really steep hill I might need to do a hill start on. I have to pull up the handbrake really tight to secure the car and then I struggle to get it back down. I was just wondering would using two hands to release the handbrake be a grade 2 or a grade 3 fault? It shouldn't be a grade 2 or a grade 3 fault, no, on, but like if you lose, it all depends on how bad it is. Like, like if, if, you, if you lose control of the car and you let the handbrake down with two hands and then you might find the car rolling back or something before you've got to, you know, got to control of the car. Well, then it's going to be very, very bad news. So it all depends on how bad it is. But Katie, I was giving lessons to a girl there um, about 10 days ago. Who had, she had the same problem. I think it was an older, slightly 2009 or 2010 Nissan Micra, actually. And again, in Wexford, there's lots of, lots of hills, as you know. And she had a lot of trouble getting the handbrake down. And I was trying to show her, and I think it worked to a certain extent, but she always had that doubt in her head. It's all about the technique. So when you're pulling the handbrake up, um, you know you, you bring it up securely so you won't roll back on the hill. That's important. That's a good tip. Now, when you want to let it down, you kind of have to remember, you have to pull it up before you let it down. That's what often people forget. They're, they're, trying, to, they're trying to press the button in really hard without realizing that you have to lift up the handbrake a little bit and then press the button in hard and then she'll go down all the way okay i it's the kind of thing i need to be i need to be beside you in the car to show you and i need to be on a hill to practice it about 20 times to give you the confidence in it but if the handbrake is up it's tight it's very tight it's very secure especially if it's up to the highest so make sure that when you're letting it down that you pull up hard you have to kind of have to yank it up yank it up hard I know that's going to be hard, but you have to do it. Button in fully, and make sure make sure you keep the button in, and down she goes. So you, ha you have to come up before you go down, because the, the little bit of a lift up you do, it kind of loosens the handbrake, and it makes it a bit freer, okay? So I hope that helps you. You need to practice that as best you can, so you don't have any mental issues or mental block on that, okay? Um, 
Alan Marshall, any crack? Lots of crack, Alan. Lots of crack. I was watching the Lions match yesterday, so that was a good result. And I was watching Cork and Kerry today. Um, I love Kerry, but I, I, I was supporting Cork because I have a bit of a soft spot for Cork, but it wasn't to be. Um, but I'll come back to the other comments in a second. Let's get into this report sheet here now, folks, okay? This is a driving test report sheet from a girl um, who unfortunately failed, but she subsequently passed. As always with report sheets, won't be giving out any personal details. I won't even say where she did the testing. Let's get straight down to it, okay? Here's what the tester said to her as to why she failed, okay? So one sec, here we are. Now, observation moving off, okay? I'm going to go down through the faults, all of them now, but I'm going to just tell you what the tester said first. Not getting a proper blind spot. So something was mentioned about the 5 o'clock zone. The 5 o'clock zone is kind of here where my, where my book is. And this girl, I believe, was only looking sideways like that. She wasn't turning her shoulder. I've always been saying this. If, if you don't turn your shoulder and you don't turn your head around like that, you're always going to be at risk of losing a mark on observation moving off. So if you're moving off, make sure you get a proper blind spot and you look in your five o'clock zone, not just your three o'clock zone. That's incredibly important, folks. No matter how good or bad you think you are, you have to get that right first. And don't forget as well, you have to refresh the blind spot too if it takes you a bit longer to move off. But I'll, I'll get to that in a second. I'm just going to keep going here with what the test said to her. Observation overtaking. So this is a very important point. It was actually coming back in after she was overtaken. So when she moved out to overtake um, a few parked cars, she seemed to move out okay. Um, was fine. So she checked the mirrors. She indicated moving out. But then when she moved back in though, after she finished her overtaking move, she moved back in to come back onto the left side of the road. She didn't check her left side mirror coming back in. And that's where she lost the mark there on observation um, overtaking. So it's not always on the way out, as you can see. Sometimes you're going to lose a mark on overtaking on the way back in. Okay, so it's very, very important. Anytime you change direction, like moving off, changing lanes, overtaking be the two big ones. You have to get the right mirror on the way out and the left mirror on the way back in, okay? So I thought that was a very good point to make there. It's probably not something that doesn't come up too often in the report sheets. Next thing the tester said to her, a lack of mirror checks on the second exit on the roundabout. So when she was going straight on the second exit on the roundabout, second exit to go straight, there was a lack of mirrors. Always good to at least get the two side mirrors here. So the left side mirror is good because it'll help you just in case there's a cyclist coming up your left and that your peripheral vision will probably see the island of the exit to help you with your timing of indicators, if you know what I mean, to do the indicators at the right time. And then the right, the right, mirror, right side mirror can be good as well because if you're going straight, it's good to give a quick glance in the right side mirror just after halfway, just in case a, a cyclist or a motorbike or someone is coming up on your side, especially on the bigger roundabouts that are wider, okay? So a lack of mirror, lack of mirror checks there on the roundabout going straight. That's what the, that one was, observation at roundabouts. Next, next another important one, it's probably something that doesn't come up too often, but I, and that's what, one of the reasons I chose this, because I, I think it's a very, this is a very important point for you, for you out there. Progress at lights. Now, normally I would associate this with just being too slow moving off, maybe not rolling up into the center of the junction when the light goes green, things like that. But in this case, um, it was because there was a flashing amber light and the driving test candidate stayed in the same spot and she didn't go forward on the flashing amber light. Now, the flashing amber light is a circular light um, that's flashing on and off a couple of seconds before the light goes green. You can proceed, okay? You can go forward, you can move forward, as long as there's no pedestrians crossing or about to cross, okay? About to cross. Make sure that you move off then. Let me give a quick glance at the mirrors if you want, just to make sure there's no cyclists coming, whatever. And then you can proceed as long as there's no pedestrians about to cross the road, okay? I think this girl, she waited until the light went fully green and then she moved off. Um, wasn't the worst mistake, but definitely a mark on progress, as you can see. Next point then that the tester said to her, and she knew this herself anyway. Instead of moving off in first gear, she moved off in third gear. Her gear stick is such a way that, that she thought she went into first gear. Um, maybe she didn't keep the gear stick to the left enough. But instead of going to first gear, she accidentally ended up in third gear and stalled the car. So that's where she would have lost marks on vehicle controls over there, clutching gears, one of them. So it didn't take off in first gear by accident. And on the reverse around the corner then, and she, the tester said to her, but she knew herself anyway, she was just too far away, okay? She was just much too far away at the end. Didn't finish close enough at the end of the reverse. Um, her observation was pretty good, because there doesn't seem to be any marks on observation on reverse. That's a good thing. 
but she just was just too far away. Didn't didn't kind of tighten up the gap at the end. Okay, so let's go through the marks one by one then. Okay, we'll start up there at the top with the grade one marks. Now, two marks on rules and checks, two marks on hand signals. Okay, I'm going to go through those hand signals now, so just so you know them. Um, so the rules and checks, that, that's just theory. Like, didn't know the, didn't know the questions, didn't know the road signs. Maybe it was a lack of preparation. Maybe she got asked a few tricky ones. For example, yellow box, don't stop in it, exception, turn and right, clear way, no parking or stopping, you can overtake on the left if the car in front is turning right, or if you're uh, turning left up ahead, or in slow moving traffic, um, amber lights stop if you can stop, uh, stop if you can stop safely, flashing amber, watch out for pedestrians, zigzag lines, no overtake, or no overtaking or parking, things like that. Anyway, she got a couple of questions wrong, it wasn't a grade two, just a grade one, so it was still in the minor category. Hand signals, well, that's a pity, you know, she only, it was only a grade one mark, so if she had got one more hand signal wrong, it would have been, it would have been a grade uh, two there. Uh, let's, let's, let's talk about the hand signals, okay? So, to traffic from behind, that you're going right, you stick your ha hand out the window, like that's my right hand, okay? Traffic from behind, you're going left, just kind of anti-clockwise circles like that. Traffic from behind, you're slowing down or stopping, up and down, okay? up and down, traffic from behind or slowing down or stopping. Now to a guard or a points man in front of you, you're going right is the same, straight out the window, uh, you're going straight, uh, left hand up just underneath the uh, center mirror, and you're going left then, just bring your hand across your body like that, okay? So they're the hand signals. Make sure you know them, because you know, if, if you're kind of touch and go 50-50, and you lose out on your theory and your hand signals, in in effect, you're kind of you're kind of getting failed on the hand signals and failed on the theory because it's it's an accumulation of marks that you you know that's unnecessary. So just try and try and do your best to study up on those. Observation moving off. So as we discovered from the feedback sheet, there it's all to do with the blind spot generally. This is usually easy enough to pinpoint. It's either for just forgetting the blind spot, just like completely forgetting it. Maybe maybe she was thinking about something else. Maybe maybe she made a mistake and and the issue was on her mind. Sometimes people, after the reverse in the turnabout, they kind of forget to check the blind spot moving off. It could have been something like that. She already mentioned she knows what the other one of them was about, not giving a proper blind spot, like like not looking behind in her 5 o'clock zone. So, didn't turn the head properly. If you want to get a proper blind spot, it's not out the window on your side. It's not, it's not your driver's window. It's the back passenger window. That's the window you look out, okay? Observation overtaking, so we know what that was, it was not checking the mirrors coming back in after dealing with some parked cars. She didn't check the left mirror as she just maneuvered back in, uh, so that's what that was. Observation at roundabouts, we think that was the mirrors as well, she didn't get the mirrors uh, going straight on the roundabout. So there would have been a lack of awareness there for other cars or cyclists, okay, so that's where that comes from. Um, reaction to hazards. Now, she didn't really say about that, but that's a kind of a general one. That could be anything. It could be from doing a ramp too fast to going into a pothole to breaking suddenly for some roadworks or something like that. It's, it's, I find in, in Wexford anyway, a lot of it can be to do with parked cars and, and uh, you know, not, not dealing with parked cars effectively and may, maybe, maybe going when, when you shouldn't go and things like that. But uh, it's all related to reading the road ahead. So if ever you see a reaction to a hazardous mark, it's usually to do with an inability or a failure to kind of anticipate something ahead. You can see the word anticipate there is is on this uh, driving report sheet as well there for hazards. But it was only one mark, so it wasn't it wasn't fatal. It wasn't too bad. Like, but that's what hazards is. Um, it's a very broad it's a very broad area, you know. Signals at roundabout send is next, a grade two mark there. So this is, again, maybe she uh, forgot to signal. Maybe she did it too late. Maybe she left it on a little bit too long or did it at the, did it at the wrong time. But anyway, there was some issue here with indicating either approaching on or leaving the roundabouts, okay? Sometimes people make mistakes on signals at roundabouts and they just don't remember where it happened or when it happened. It's just sometimes it, it, people have a blank on that and um, that happens, you know. Uh, next one then, progress at traffic light. So as we, as we as I said a few moments ago, uh, it was a flashing amber light. She should have went, should have proceeded um, if there's no pedestrians there. So if you have a flashing amber light, don't stay in the one place, go forward, move off, as long as there's no pedestrians uh, crossing or about to cross, okay? Vehicle controls then is next, clutch and gears. So. We have a little bit of an insight into that because she, we, we know, I know from the report sheet, from her email, sorry, 
that she accidentally took off in third gear instead of first gear. So that's definitely going to be one of the gear ones anyway. But gears could also be to do with being in the wrong gear. Um, like, you know, letting the engine get too loud, not getting up the gears in time, maybe a bit late getting down the gears, uh, taking off in the wrong gear as, 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 we, as we know what happened here anyway. Uh, so it could be something to do with gears. Some, sometimes the testers are going to come down on if if you're not going up the gears quick enough. Like like if you're at if you're at thirty or forty kilometers, you should be definitely up in third or fourth. Like if you're at thirty, definitely be in third gear. Okay. If you're anywhere around forty five, uh, forty eight, fifty, you should be in fourth gear. Okay. So if the engine is kind of getting louder, making a bit of a noise, you need to get up the gears. Okay. It's better for the environment. Uh, it's more energy efficient. So make sure you're aware of that clutch um it could have been it could have been for anything like generally when it comes to clutch i find it's probably for coasting which is leaving your clutch in too long so for example when you're coming down a hill and this is a this is a this is a big no-no folks make sure whatever whatever about coasting up a hill or on the flat you must not coast coming down a hill okay now you have to coast a little bit, some you know, if you're changing gears, going on to a downhill roundabout. That's completely understandable. So you you know you you break first, put the clutch in, change down gear, and then come off the clutch slowly. Don't leave the clutch in for prolonged periods of time going downhill. Okay, and while you're changing gears on the downhill, make sure you have your brake pressed at the same time. Some people, when I'm giving them lessons over the years, they they found it a complete revelation to discovered that they could actually brake and clutch at the same time okay so that's perfectly fine absolutely essential when you're going downhill so when it comes to clutch marks anyway very often it's for coasting overusing the clutch coasting is dangerous because it kind of makes the engine go all quiet and all silent so it kind of has that deceiving impact on you you probably think you're going slower than you actually are and what happens is the car loses its ability to engine brake so the ability to brake naturally is gone and the car will very often just go flying down the hill uh, while making very very little noise it'll so almost sound like an electric car and that's where the danger and uh, misconception is with coasting it could also be clutch marks could also be for lifting the clutch too quick um, so when you're changing gears you need to make sure that you lift the clutch slowly particularly in the lower gears like going from third to second or something like that or if you do need to go from second gear to first gear because you want to creep out of the blind junction it's incredibly important that you lift your clutch very slowly if you lift your clutch a little quick, the car may jump or jerk a little bit, and that's not going to be a good thing. It's not going to be good for smoothness or uh, for for the control of the car. Clutch, um, th what do we say? Coasting, yeah, uh, listening a little bit quick. Um, maybe rolling back as well. If you find yourself rolling back or stalling, sometimes the marks will be lost, marks will be pointed under, under uh, clutch. Okay, so make sure you're comfortable moving off on the hill make sure you're comfortable getting your bite i always say if you go to a quiet housing estate or some kind of quiet industrial estate and just practice 10 or 15 or 20 hill starts a uh, bit of extra the, the bigger the hill the more juice you give it the bigger the hill the higher the bite the, the, the slightly higher being your clutch that is and that's where the marks usually get lost on clutch okay so for rolling back uh being a bit jerky by coming off too quick and for coasting as well okay uh, also on clutch it's very important that when, when you're when you're going down the gears that you use your brake at the same time and don't go down to second gear too far away so if you're one if you're coming to a roundabout and obviously you want to go to second gear or come to the roundabout okay that's 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 a good idea but only go to second gear when you're around about three or four car lengths from the line if you, I've had uh, so many people in the car over the years, they're, they're wanting to go, they're, they're probably a bit nervous about going down the gears, so they end up going down the gears way, way too early. What happens then is the car is not ready for second gear when you do it 30 or 40 meters too early. It's just not ready, and it's going to tell you it's not ready by jerking and jumping uh, when you come off the clutch. Even if you lift it slowly, it'll probably still jerk or jump. Remember, you have to get the speed right first, and then usually in driving, the gears follow the speed. So... So, for example, you speed up and then you go to second gear. You speed up and then you go to third gear. On the way down then, you slow down and then you drop from fourth to third. And you slow down some more and then you drop from third to second. So, as you can see, usually that's the way it works. The speed first or the slow down first and then the gears, okay? So, try and keep the car smooth. Try and keep your journey nice and smooth without any jerks and jumps. And that can lead to a successful outcome, hopefully. 
yield right of way at roundabout. So in simple language, um, it appears that she pulled out when somebody else had the right of way on a roundabout. It doesn't say like what exactly happened here, but again, it's only one grade two mark, so it's not it's not um it wasn't fatal. But you know, sometimes when it comes to yielding right of way and pulling out too soon, they kind of they can be borderline grade two, grade three, and sometimes it does depend on the discretion of the tester. The tester just, just makes a decision on that one, and he gave her the benefit of the doubt here. But if the car was much closer, I'm sure he probably would have given her a grade three instead of a grade two there. So anything to do with yield right of way is basically the tester saying to you, you went there when you shouldn't have went. You should have waited for a more appropriate gap to go. Okay. Uh, and one, one thing that can help you with right of way as well is just try and judge your hills. So ask yourself, for example, am I the driver? Am I on a hill? Is it going to take me longer to move off and let down the handbrake, for example? Um, think about the other cars that you're giving way to. Are they coming down a bit of a hill where they're picking up momentum? In that case, you probably want to be a bit more cautious then. Um, are you the driver on a bit of a downhill or flat? And the other cars on the right and the roundabout, for example, they're coming up a hill and they have to deal with a blind junction. Well, in that case, then you might be able to be a bit more, um, how do I put it, a bit more enthusiastic in terms of in terms of going if it's safe. Like, so you have to kind of depend because you have to kind of take each junction as it comes because there's no one size fits all. It all depends on the junction. You have to judge all these things I mentioned there, like the hills, your ability to go quick, um, you know, any other hazards that might be there. Um, and then that can kind of feed into your decision then on whether you should pull out or whether you should wait. Okay. And then reverse competency. So basically the tester saying that she didn't finish close enough to the curb. Maybe she was a bit wide and she didn't bring it in in time. Um... I noticed she didn't lose a mark on observation, so maybe I'm only I'm only guessing this now, but maybe she was looking behind her so much that she probably maybe didn't look enough in the side mirror, possibly, and maybe maybe she needed to get a few more side mirror checks there just to tuck in more at the end. I, I've I've made a video on quarter steers. Um, if you search in YouTube, they tie reversing quarter steers. You'll see what I mean there, where I show you. In that a simple technique just towards the end of the reverse af after you've um after you've straightened up and then kind of when you're just you know kind of getting on the, on the at, towards the end of the reverse but you're you've still got about five or six seconds to reverse whatever you do don't do this kind of stuff here you'll end up doing going squiggling left and right doing fishtail turns and you don't want that because it, it looks bad for you it's it's it's, it's a lack of control so I in my video on quarter steers, I explain how if you give the steer, give the car just a just a kind of a gentle steer like that towards the end, and then just give it time to react. Just allow the car time to react to the steering instruction that you've given it. Okay, um, it's easier to explain when I'm talking to somebody or in a video, but that's the general idea there. So hopefully those tips there, and the information that has been revealed to you from this report sheet is going to help you now when you have your driving lessons or tests coming up okay so i thought there was some good information there and um, i thought there was some there was some good topics covered on that uh driving test report sheet uh, based on the feedback she gave me okay then folks i have an awful itchy nose for some reason now i'm going to get to some comments here again and then i'm going to get back into um my key tips on the reverse around the corner okay so let me just find out where my comments were. Thank you. Blessing gave me that super chat at five year order. Thank you very much for that blessing if you're still online. Really appreciate that. Um, I think you're, you have a comment there with it. I'm so, I'm so much proud of you. Uh, if not your video, if not for your videos, I think you mean, I don't think I will pass driving lessons. God bless you. More wisdom, more focus. Well, thank you very much. Um, blessing, that's very nice words. And thanks for your support. Much appreciated. Okay then, so where was I with comments? Um, let's see, Blessing was there, uh, Damien asked about the tier, I got to that question, that one, yeah. Um, let's see, Alan Marshall, yeah, I think that the last one was Alan Marshall where he said any cracks, so I'm just getting to that there now. Uh, Damien, yeah, Damien Cladiv is the next comment. My... Um, my flatmate did a mock driving test with an instructor 
and had 29 mistakes after it went and passed the real test with eight mistakes. Well, that's what I'd call a good a good mock test because that, that might have uh, given him a bit of focus then and maybe given him the, the kick up the backside that he needed. But I always say, folks, a, a mock test is always going to be very, very different to the real driving test. Sometimes um, the mock tests can be a lot easier, but in this case, based on De Damien's comment, it was a lot harder. So I would just urge you to be cautious uh, with, with doing mock tests. Personally, I don't really do them that often. I prefer to teach people the skills and I prefer to, to kind of educate people and concentrate on passing information. I don't really think it's a good use of my time to pretend to be some driving tester when I'm not. I prefer to be uh, teaching people the skills and informing them of stuff rather than sitting there in silence and ticking a few boxes. But it does have its uses, especially if you do it properly and it's with an instructor who you don't know. And you can, if you can replicate the conditions and the atmosphere of a real driving test, it certainly has its uses. Especially if it's done about two weeks before the actual test, because then you can kind of work on the things that were highlighted in the mock test, okay? But as you can see, sometimes, based on Damien's comment as well, it's very, very, very different. The mock test can very often be very, very different to the real thing, okay? So it can be very hard to replicate. There's nothing like a real driving test, you know? Uh, Alan Burke, um, hi, any tips for clutching? I'm driving two weeks and I'm driving pretty good, but I'm finding myself on the clutch uh, before braking, coming into junctions uh, or slow, very slow corners, is this dangerous? Yes, it is dangerous. You need to get out of that habit, Alan Burke, on coasting. You need to you need to watch my video on um, more braking. Okay, if you if you type into YouTube day and tie um, more control, you'll see a thumbnail for a video with the brake pedal um, kind of highlighted and the clutch. I think there's an X through the clutch, I, I think. Uh, email me, and if you want to email me, I'll point you in the direction of that video. But what you need to do is you have to think here, Alan, B before C, okay? That means brake before clutch, especially if you're going downhill, because if you if you clutch first going downhill, the car is going to pick up speed, pick up momentum, and you may end up braking suddenly or braking more firmly subsequently then, which is not going to do anything for your confidence uh, it's not going to do anything for your control of the car. It sounds to me there that you're you're in danger of getting into some very, very bad habits there with clutch uh, by using it too much. The clutch should only be used to change gears um, and to stop generally, uh, maybe clutch control as well, but it should not be used for slowing down. The brake is for slowing down, the clutch is for changing gears or stopping, okay? Um, Darren Hennessy. Hi, Dane. Oh, yes, here we have some someone now who's finally had a go at the signs. So let's see if Darren Hennessy gets the, these four signs correct. Number one sign, clear way, that's correct. No stopping or parking during the time shown. Number two, no entry, that's correct. No entry for vehicles. Number three is a loop road. They love asking that in Dublin. Uh, number four, rural speed limit, yes, is 80 kilometers, but drive at a speed appropriate to different situations like potholes. Very good, Darren. That's what those four signs mean, folks. Make sure you know them. Number one, clear way. Number two, no entry. Number three, loop road. And number four is a rural speed limit sign. Hi, Dane. I have my test in Wicklow tomorrow morning. Your videos have helped me a lot. Wish me luck, Hugh. Hugh, good night, lads. The very best luck to you, Hugh. Take it one road at a time. Don't drive too slow. Don't be constantly looking in your mirrors. Do look in the mirrors when you need to and try your best to read the road ahead and that's related to not looking in the mirrors too much. Yes, mirrors are important when you're overtaking, changing lanes before you indicate. You know, they are they are important. I'm not saying that they're not important, but just at the right time, uh, you have to read the road ahead. That's much more important. But good luck to you, Hugh, doing his test in Wicklow tomorrow morning. Okay, so I'm going to get back to... The comments there soon i want to talk about reversing around the corner now okay so a lot of people will have nerves um going at 90 when it comes to the reverse around the corner they'll be fretting about it fretting about it they'll be nervous about it they'll be kind of dreading it but it can be managed very very effectively okay there's no need to be nervous about it because if you practice it it can kind of demystify the whole thing but I'm going to give you some, some quick tips here now. Now, it's it's always easier if I'm explaining this one-to-one -one with, with someone 
but I'll do my best to kind of articulate some really important tips here. Okay, so the first thing up there is observation, ability, and yielding. So there are the three areas that you'll get marked on um, on the reverse. There are the three areas that the tester is watching. So your observation, your ability, which is, which is competency basically, and your ability to yield right of way. So let's talk about observation. On the reverse run corner, do not look in the side mirror all the time. Okay, if you do that, you're going to lose marks on observation. If you look in the side mirror, you will have a good view of the curb and the footpath, but you'll have huge blind spots everywhere else. So what I'm saying to you is, yes, look in the side mirror every now and then, but also, so if there's your left side mirror, there's your center mirror, there's your other side mirror, okay? So you'll be looking in all three mirrors, as well as your both your shoulders. Left shoulder, there, and also your right shoulder there occasionally as well. So when I'm if I'm giving someone a lesson and I want to start some reversing with somebody, what I do not do, okay, what I do not do is bring them to a reverse around the corner and show them how to reverse around the corner. That's to me is ridiculous, okay? It's trying to run before you can even walk. So what I do with someone when it comes to reversing, I bring them to a nice quiet car park, I introduce them to clutch control and what I what I like to call the five point check. And, and when you're reversing, there's five places you should be looking. The left shoulder, number one, the side mirror, number two, the middle mirror, number three, the other side mirror, then number four, and the right shoulder, number five. That's why I call it the five point check. Uh, so I get them used to doing that so they can have good all around observation. I also get them used to using clutch control and also how to reverse up the hill, maybe with, with, with an extra gentle clutch control and a little bit of extra acceleration for up the hill. And then going down the hill, there'll be no acceleration. You'll be just, you'll be just using the clutch and brake. So you have to clutch in fully and just coming on and off the brake. There's no need to accelerate or raise your clutch going down the hill. And then on the flat, then it's just clutch control. So that's what I do. And then I always find that people are in the right habits going forward because I always try and teach people to do the right things for the right reasons, not just to pass a driving test, not just for a shortcut to pass a driving test. And if you, if you get the basics of reversing right from the start, like knowing about the five point check, knowing about clutch control and make and understanding that you have to give way to people behind you. If you're used to that and you're doing that constantly every day, every week as you're driving, well then when you come around to do a test then, you've already got those good habits ingrained anyway, so it's not going to be a big job to teach you how to reverse around the corner. To me, that makes sense anyway, rather than doing a reverse around the corner, someone in their second or third or fourth lesson. So observation. Just make sure, in simple language, you don't look in the one place too long. Even behind you, even though it's good to look behind you, don't look there all the time. Try and have good all-around observation over the shoulders and in the mirrors. I understand you're going to have to get to a good level of confidence to do that, but you will get there. Competency then, or as I've said here, ability. So on the test sheet, this, this will be under competency. So like on this sheet over here, this person lost a grade one, uh, or sorry, a grade two on competency because she was too far away from the curb. So when it comes to competency, the tester is watching your ability to do it with the right skill and with the right level of confidence, okay? So that could be anything from making sure you're going at a nice slow speed, like you should be reversing at kind of a walking pace speed, that you turn at the right time. Normally you turn when the back wheels are level with where the bend starts, or as I like to say, when the curb disappears from your left side mirror, that's usually a very good time to turn the wheel then. Um, it can be also to do with your ability to manage the car on the hills. That's why, as I said to you, when I'm teaching someone how to drive, I, I get the basics in first. I show them how to reverse uphill, how to reverse downhill, how to reverse on the flat, how to observe properly. So that kind of then lays the proper foundations for a good reverse on the corner further down the line. So competency is all about your ability to do it with competence, with skill, and with the right kind of um, fluidity, let's say. So knowing when to turn and all that kind of stuff. Yielding then, well, this is very important. And sometimes it goes, it goes um, unmentioned. If you're reversing around the corner, you have to make sure you give way to traffic behind you, okay? So if you see that there's a car coming behind you, you should give way to that person when they're about 40, maybe 50 meters away. Do not keep going. Even if they flash, even if they flash you forward, even if they kind of encourage you to go, do not go, unless the tester instructs you otherwise, stop, give them at least five seconds so that they can, because usually after five seconds, the other person will either 
uh, decide that they're that they're not going to go, or they'll probably end up overtaking you. If they do not overtake you after five se four or five seconds, I say go back to the start. But just make sure when you're going back to the start that you check your mirrors and your blind spot, proper blind spot, because if you don't and something happens there, you could easily end up failing your test, or at least you'll lose a mark on observation moving off. Okay. So watch out when, when you're um, reversing around the corner that you give way to other cars. And remember, it's not just other cars. There could be people, could be could be um, pedestrians, children crossing the road. There could be a cyclist. And this is very much related to observation, as I said a few moments ago. Because if you're observing properly in your three mirrors and your two shoulders, you're probably going to be more aware of the traffic behind you and the cyclist behind you, and you're not going to get caught out there then. So they're very much related, okay? They'd be the three main areas that the tester will mark you on when it comes to the reverse around the corner. Now, the next point I have there is look at the corner first. So, in the vast majority of cases, the driving tester will ask you to park before the corner, and then you'll end up moving off and then parking on the left. So, essentially, you're going to be driving past the corner um, before you actually do it. So, you'll have a chance to observe it. So, take that opportunity to observe the corner. Make a note of any hills, like is it flat, is it uphill, is it downhill. Make a note of any children that might be playing. Is there a, a woman about to get into the car with her children beside her? Because if she is, you might end up meeting her a couple, a couple of seconds into your reverse around the corner, if you know what I mean. Um, if there's children playing and they have a ball or something like that, watch out for the ball because the, ch the child might end up following the ball and get close to the car. Don't expect children to be as observant as adults when it comes to dealing with cars reversing. In fact, don't even expect adults because, as I always say, Irish pedestrians generally they are not the brightest sparks on the old bonfire. So, anyway, if you look at the corner first, it can give you a good gauge as to what it's like. You'll be able to see, is it open? Like, can you see all the way around the corner? Is there bushes kind of blocking your view? As I said about hills. Um, you know, you might notice there might be a drain there as well. So if you go into the drain, don't worry. I mean, if, if you go into a drain, that's fine. It might even be a good sign because it might just show that you're that you're about you know half a meter from the curb anyway. So don't worry about that. Uh, keep going, and you'll come out of the drain anyway easily enough. It's no big deal, honestly. Um, so yeah, have a look at the corner first anyway. And whatever you do, when if you have to stop and move off, whether you're about to start a reverse around the corner. Or you're, you're moving forward past the junction to park on the left make sure you do the proper observation moving off so when you're moving off make sure you, you know you get your plan i always say one two three one gear stick two indicators three mirrors blind spot and move off and then before you start your reverse around the corner then make sure you get a full look around okay a full 360 degree look around before you start your reverse, you can indicate you can indicate left to, to reverse around the corner if you want. It's, it's honestly it's no big deal. I was talking to testers about this. That it's it's not it's not essential at all. You don't you don't have to do it. Um, but if you do if you do do it, it's fine. It's no big deal. <clears throat> Just make sure you remember to turn to indicate the proper way then when you're moving off. Okay, so so have a look at the corner first anyway, because that can help you uh you know set the scene for the for the corner, moving off and parking. So I kind of touched on that. If you are reversing around the corner, for example, and there is a, a load of obstructions suddenly come from behind, okay? Now, if after a couple of seconds, those obstructions are stuck behind you because they don't want to overtake you or they're not able to overtake you, that's fine. You may have to go back and start again then, okay? But listen carefully. Do not go into first gear and just pull straight forward to the start, okay? Do not do that. Make sure you put it into first gear, you indicate out, if um you should need to you should be indicating out um unless you're very wide you may not indicate out then like but it all depends where you are well what, so whatever about the indicator make sure you're in the correct gear and make sure you get your three mirrors and your blind spot before you move off to go back to the start again because so many people forget that and they end up getting grade twos or grade threes on observation moving off because they didn't do it because, and I understand why, because they probably feel under so much pressure and stress and their mind is completely on the reverse around the corner. They're probably not thinking about the, the blind spot moving off, but try your best to remember that. Next point, slow, use clutch control. So this, in many ways, is the most important one of all. I can promise you, folks, if I've learned anything over the last 13 years of teaching people how to drive, it's this. If you have proper 
um, clutch control and you are confident using clutch control on the flat, on the uphill and on the downhill, then you have got a great, great basis for doing a good reverse around the corner and a good turnabout. So what is clutch control? It's moving the car with only the clutch. So typically, if I was asking somebody to do clutch control, as always, I'd always go to a nice quiet car park first, get the basics right first, lay the foundations first, don't go to a busy road and do a turnabout or, or reverse around a corner unless you have the basics taught to you first. That's my philosophy anyway. So you can do clutch control in first gear or reverse gear, okay? It's all it's all the same. The only difference is you're going forward and going back. You may go slightly faster going forward. You may go, may go slightly faster going back. It, it all depends. But So you go into first gear or reverse gear anyway. I would always say to people then, have your right foot just kind of hovering over the brake. Just for safety, just in case you need quick and easy access to it, okay? And then you just bring up, now, now not pressing the brake, just, just kind of hovering over it with your heel on the ground, just, just for safety. You bring up your clutch then, just to get a little tiny little bite, or as I like to call it, a clutch control bite. That's just a slight, slight bite. It's not, it's not a heavy bite, because you're not, you're, not, you're not on a hill, so you don't need a big bite. But you're not usually on a hill anyway. And then, once you have your little, your little bite, so your right foot is over the brake, your clutch is about halfway up, you have your bite, let down the handbrake then, and then let the clutch do the work, okay? That means bring up your clutch ever so slightly and then put it in ever so slightly, then up ever so, it's like little, um, it's like tiny little movements with the clutch, okay? Just the, the smallest, smallest little movement. It's like up to go and into slow, up to go, into slow. And that is basically what clutch control is. If you're going up a hill, it's exactly the same thing, just maybe with a little bit more revs, depending on the hill, of course, more revs for the bigger the hill. And if you can master clutch control, well, then you have a great chance of mastering the reverse around the corner and the turnabout. Because if you have good clutch control, it just lays the foundations for everything. And I mean, you can observe properly then, you can steer properly, you can feel confident in your movements and your reactions if you have proper clutch control, because that just is so essential on this. When should you turn the wheel then? Well, as I said, I usually say to people that when the curb disappears from the left side mirror, that's usually a good time to turn. I usually would say maybe give it about a second or two and then turn. It kind of depends on the angle, ang angle excuse me, of the corner as well. So if it's a very, very, very sharp corner, like if it's like, um, like, like that kind of corner, you know, like 90 degrees, as soon as the curb disappears, you probably want to turn then, and probably turn a little. I, I want not not like really fast, but but kind of like fast-ish, if you know what I mean. Now, if if the corner is more kind of gradual, okay, like it's not a not a sharp angle. Well, then you 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 may well um. It, it all depends on the on the person when they turn, but you'd normally give it an extra second then before you turn, and just turn a little bit slower, okay. So that's why you have to look at the corner first, as I said in the, the second point above there. If you have a look at the corner first, and if it's a sharp angle, you may be able to turn a little bit quicker. Whereas if it's more of a gradual angle corner, you can turn slightly slower, okay? There's no one size fits all. You have to base each reverse on the hills, on what angle it is. They're all different, okay? Straightening up, and I find this is where the problems very often come for, for people who are doing the reverse around a corner problems with straightening up so generally what I would say to people is when the curb disappears you would turn left then as in turn turn left this way okay and you would usually keep turning until you see the curb reappearing around the, when you get to the other side now when the curb reappears in the same side mirror that it disappeared in okay so when it reappears in this in the left side mirror that's when you would normally give two at least two steers as in one two steers to the right and that's usually enough then to straighten up uh, when I say straighten up the car goes from being at this kind of a kind of a, like an awkward angle like that like a sort of, sort of 45 degree angle if that makes sense and then when you do those those two straightens I said like one two okay the car then will go will go from being like that so one two it'll go it'll go from being crooked to being straight and that's why it's called straightening up and then after that then is when you would bring in the little small steers that I mentioned before. So in, in, instead of going like all these crazy steers and end up doing figures of eights and all this kind of carry on, if you need to make subsequent adjustments after you straighten up, just try give it like a quarter steer 
and then give it time to react and then come back correspondingly the other quarter then as well and then always finish with a straight wheel i've made videos on all this okay they're all on my youtube channel on, on this okay so if you straighten up properly and then after that you do the quarter steers you can have a great finish and if you do this with clutch control you can then do the observation at the same time and bob's your father's brother okay it takes time it takes patience it takes lots lots and lots of practice okay and my videos are there to help you and if you want me to point you in the direction of any of these videos just send me an email daintai at gmail.com and i'll do that okay the last point there is very much what i said there just just try not to oversteer at the start and at the end um i remember giving the girl a lesson there two weeks ago and, and at the she was she was just not at the start of the corner the reverse on the corner she kind of had the wheel like this a little, not not much crooked but it was a little bit crooked so we were no more than four or five seconds into the corner and her back wheel was scraping the curb she just wasn't focused on the wheel she, she, she didn't realize that she finished with the wheel slightly off and that's why i always say to people whenever you're parking whether if you're a turnabout your reverse your hill start whatever you're parking for always try and finish with your wheel nice and straight in the quarter of the three position because if you get into that habit there's less likelihood then of having any problems like when you start to reverse run corner like that girl did for example so they'd be the main ones on the reverse run the corner now i have more tips for you here now i'm just going to get my um notebook here because i've gone through most of the tips there on the reverse run the corner i just have i have a second list i made as well for you so just bear with me there so we've covered most of them okay and the extra tips then that i couldn't fit on the screen i have them here um so the yielding oh as i said as someone might, might have already mentioned now but always make sure you're watching out for cars behind you because if there's cars coming behind you you have to yield to them normally they'll overtake you and then make sure you give a full look around a full look all around you before you proceed again okay because in the couple of seconds that it took that car to overtake you something else could have happened um or potentially could have happened that's why it's, it's very important to give a good quick full look around before you go after you've yielded to somebody okay at the start of the reverse on the corner make sure you don't park too close to the curb okay you need to park about it's give or take half a meter from the line um in my car the door the door handle is is just sort of touching the curb it does depend on the car though it does depend on the type of door handle but as long as you don't park too close to the curb at the very start that's a good thing because if you park too close you might already be getting the mark because you even the slightest little steer left or right then could cause the wheels to scrape up against the tires okay uh, uh sorry could cause the tires to scrape up against the curb excuse me so make sure you park properly because that can help you uh get the reverse off to a good solid efficient start okay and after that just keep the wheel fairly straight until the curb disappears then Next point here then, um, yeah, make sure you observe. If you, if you have to restart again, I know, I know I've already mentioned this, but I want to mention it again because it's so important. If somebody comes from behind you, you yield to them. But if, if, if they stay stuck behind like a big truck and then they're not able to overtake, because they, they might not feel that it's safe to overtake you. So you have to make sure you give your good all-around observation before you go back to the start again. Don't just go back to the start, okay? Um, adjusting the side mirror, yes. You are allowed to adjust the side mirror. I'm not a big fan of it, to be honest with you, but if you want to adjust your left side mirror downwards to help you see better on the reverse, you can do that, okay? You can even ask the tester to move it if you want, um, if you don't have an electric one. That's fine to do. I don't recommend it, though, because I think if, if you move the side mirror down, you're not seeing as much behind you. You don't see as much of, of behind you in terms of if there's a person walking on the path or a cyclist coming up. You may well see them behind you as well, like, but... but it's i don't i don't like doing it but you can do it if you want i think it's better to ha leave the mirror up um the way it is and then at least then you don't have to remember to fix it back but you can adjust the mirror downwards if you want to help you on the reverse yeah there's no problem there uh, as i said just remember to readjust it after you after after you're finished the reverse around the corner um yeah judge the angle i've already said that but so for a sharp angle you'll probably need to turn a little bit quicker for a more gradual corner you'll probably need to turn more gradually okay so your turning the turning of the wheel is directly related to the angle of the curb okay um make a note as well is the is the reverse around the corner is it on the flat is it on the uphill or is it on the downhill if it's on the flat you're pretty much using clutch control if you're reversing um down a hill you can have the clutch in fully as in clutch completely in fully and just come on 
and off the brake to move the car okay and if you're reversing uphill it's and again it's clutch control along with some acceleration to keep the car smooth and so it doesn't uh, struggle or jerk or chug around like that okay um when you're reversing around a corner back to observation try not to look out front too much okay when you're reversing around the corner you need to be looking back there okay and in your mirrors and out over your right shoulder i always say it's good to get three right shoulder checks when you're reversing around the corner one would have to come just before you turn the wheel because you're, you're the front of your car is about to swing out like so just as and while the front of your car is swinging out it is very important to be aware of your right shoulder okay because there are blind spots being created there as the car is swinging so it is important to do that i always recommend getting a couple of right shoulder three right shoulder checks uh, when you're in the middle of the reverse around the corner but try not to spend too much time looking out front okay because if, if you look out the front window you're not going to see much i've had people and they're, they're trying to judge what the front of the car is doing when they're reversing around the corner and more often than not they end up becoming completely disorientated and confused as to the steering if you're reversing around the corner the best way to judge what the car is doing or what you want the car to do is by looking behind you not out front remember if you're driving forward you wouldn't suddenly turn your head around like this and look look behind you when you're driving forward so the same goes for reversing if you're reversing don't look out front and for steering if you're doing your steers at the end don't stare at the steering wheel the, the you need to you need to you need to steer you, you need to steer blindly basically so you need, you need to steer the wheel without looking at it okay because there's no point in looking at the wheel because if you look at the wheel you're going to be taking your eyes off the road and there could be a child or a cyclist crossing behind you so that's two important observation points there for you okay and finally then on the sorry nearly finally on the reverse around the corner the the technology in your car so a lot of cars nowadays are going to have um reversing cameras parking sensors all that kind of stuff that's that's all brilliant stuff and you should use it okay so if you have a reversing camera leave it on leave it there it's fine some cars have the little lines and angles and all that to help you reverse that's great use it definitely use it but don't stare at it don't put all your focus on it because you can't be doing that you have to be doing the majority of your time has to be spent looking over your shoulders and in your mirrors watching out what's behind you so you can certainly avail of the car's technology as long as you don't completely focus on the car's technology okay um and the final thing now on the reverse around the corner is when you're finished the reverse around the corner okay and you've done a great job or you've done an okay job or you've done a terrible job whatever you've done okay you have to understand something folks which is very very important right? once you get to that stage whether you've done well or you've done so so it's over it's finished there's nothing that you can do about it at this stage so what you have to do then is focus on your next step okay so a lot of people after the reverse or even after the turnabout they're so focused on what just happened during the reverse or during the uh, turnabout that they're not thinking about doing their blind spot and indicating and this is where so many people lose marks on signals moving off because they forget to indicate right moving off for example they also maybe sometimes forget to check the blind spot moving off and that's what happens then at the end of the reverse because they're so busy and they're so kind of caught up in the in the moment of the reverse and what happened and it's, it's kind of spinning around in their head that they then forget the important stuff about moving off okay that's why i always say moving off one two three one two three one gear stick two indicators three mirrors blind spot whether it's after the reverse after the turnabout because you move you move off after those the hill start regular move off always remember that okay don't lose marks um at the end of the reverse for failing to do the proper signals and proper observation moving off okay so i hope that helps you folks going to be getting back to some comments here now and answering your questions here live so let's have a look then kevin how i think it was the next comment i think um hi then do you know if there is any backlog for edt lessons at the moment um well it depends what you mean kevin i would say yes there is um a lot of instructors are very busy and they would have a backlog um of canvas but it, it, it depends on the it depends on the driving instructor you see um if that's what you mean by backlog um at the moment only essential drivers essential workers can take edt lessons that's the 12 lessons um they haven't they haven't 
liberalised enough for non-essential to take it. But, you know, I'm not being funny here, Kevin, but for all I know, it could be liberalised and the RSA haven't told us yet. Because as I said to you at the start of the stream, the RSA tell us nothing. I would, like I said, most of the things I find out is from the internet or from other instructors. The RSA could have completely changed the rules. And guess who's the last to know? The driving instructors, the ones who are dealing with people on the front line with uh, driving lessons. But um, as for backlogs with EDT, yeah, there, there probably is, but it all depends on the instructor, you see. Keen Fortune, I then passed my test in May in Wexford. That's great news. Um, with only two falls, and they were only on speed on bumps. Thanks for the help with the videos. Had 14 marks the first time. So you weren't too far away the first time, um, but it was still not successful. And you did it the second time then, Keen. So I want to say a big congratulations to you, fellow Wexford man. Congrats to you on passing the test. And as I always say, it's proof there from Keen's comment. Even if you fail the driving test, it's not the end of the journey. It's just part of the journey. You know, I mean, when I was 17 or 18, I failed first time. But I just reapplied straight away and I got it eventually when, when I eventually got my test the second time. It's all part of the journey. And then sometimes me passing the test back then was not actually... Pa I wasn't actually passing a test. Sometimes I feel that... When I got to a certain stage of driving, maybe when I'd done my first 80,000 kilometers or my first 100,000 kilometers, or when I felt comfortable on the M50 driving around Dublin, I think that's when I felt I actually passed my test, you know, because it is a great achievement to pass the test, but the learning never stops, you know, the learning never ends, and there's always going to be new roads that you can challenge yourself on, there's always going to be new roads that will challenge you, so um, it's just worth bearing that in mind, uh, but well done Keen. that's great, great news. Um, Patrick Devitt, how far do I give, how far do I give way on a roundabout to people? This is the classic moment where the following phrase is uh, very relevant, Patrick. It all depends on the roundabout, okay? So if you're at a mini roundabout, you'll probably have to give way to somebody who is waiting at the line, like if they're at the line. If it's a big roundabout on a big ring road, well then you could actually easily proceed while they're waiting at the line because the, the the space between you and them is so much bigger on a bigger roundabout and it's so much smaller on a mini roundabout so the answer is i don't know it all depends on the roundabout i can't give you a, i cannot give you a simple answer to such a an incredibly broad question all i can say is it depends on the roundabout but beware as well though patrick up the hills so just to, to briefly and simply say it if you're on an uphill and the guy on your right is on a downhill, well then I would say, you know, don't rush it there. You know, give him at least 50 metres, give or take. I'm only, I'm only throwing 50 out there, I don't know, because it, it all depends on the roundabout. But if you're on a bit of a downhill, and the other car is coming up a hill on a roundabout, well, you could probably easy, you could probably go a bit easier then, you could probably feel more confident going then, because he should probably be slowing down more, because he's going up a hill. Uh, and you should be able to take off quicker because you're on the downhill. So if you bear that in mind, bear in mind the size of the roundabout, bear in mind the hills, um, you can get your answer then, okay? But just to clarify, it all depends on the roundabout. They're all individual, they're all unique, okay? Blessing, I what I and thank you again, Blessing, for your, for your support. What I love about your teacher, you are very calm. Well, thank you very much. I try anyway. I've learned in life that... Whether you stay calm or whether you freak out over something, it's probably not going to change it. So by just staying calm, your heart rate stays a bit lower. But uh, yeah, that's plus I always think if if you like take a driving instructor for example, if 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 a driving instructor is calm and patient, he's probably going to be um, a better communicator, and the learner driver is probably going to listen and do what he or she says. Whereas if the driving instructor is going all crazy and is giving out and is impatient, well, that's not that's going to be bad for the confidence and it's going to be bad for the communication process. So trying to be calm is usually a good thing. I usually am calm, but, you know, like I saw, I'm only human too. So there, there are other times, there are times in different situations where I'm maybe not as calm. But thank you for your for your comment, Blessing. You're 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 like a you're like a, a knight in shining armor here showering showering me with uh, love bombs here so appreciate your support um what do we got here john john carwin folks that reminds me if you're in mallow in cork and you have a test coming up in the mallow race course check out dr bob's school of motoring 
run by the legendary John Kerwin. And John is a great man. Uh, I've actually never met him in person, but uh, I've only spoken to him on, over Facebook. Um, and he's a great source of support. He's always sharing stuff about about the live streams and about videos and all that. And I really appreciate the, the support, John. And best wishes to you in Mallow. Uh, your comment here, and well done, Dane. Uh, thank you for sharing your vast knowledge. Well, I say you, you've just as much knowledge as I have, probably, John. Uh, but thank you for that, John. Very much appreciated. And check him out, folks. Dr. Bob School of Motoring in Mallow. Um, if you are looking for lessons down in that neck of the woods. Um, also, while I mention instructors there, um, mention John there, if you're in NACE, check out Kildare School of Motoring, Carl Wutziel. He's a Polish lad. Um, and it, I think he, I think he does lessons in Romanian as well. Like there's no, there's no end to Carl's talents. If you're up in Dublin, check out um, In Gear Driving School. Paul Murphy from In Gear Driving School covers most, mo all the north side and the west. For automatic driving lessons, look no further than Ian Daly School of Motoring, uh, Safety First Driving School. Ian Daly, okay, covers North Dublin. Ian's a great, great man. He there, there, there's nothing about automatic lessons he doesn't know. Okay, so if you if you're looking for automatic lessons in North Dublin, Ian Daly is your man. Um, who have we got? Philip Colum Carwin as well, a great guy. Uh, up in North Dublin as well for any driving lessons up there, check him out. Um, oh, I don't know who might um. Amanda Hall, if you're up in Dundalk, in the wee county of Dunig of um, Loud, check out Amanda Hall as well. Uh, she's another person that's always sharing my stuff, so I really appreciate that, Amanda. Uh, and there's probably there's there's probably more as well. Road Sense in County Kilkenny as well, Rob in County Kilkenny. So if you've any driving lessons that you need in County Kilkenny, uh, check out Road Sense um, there, and Rob will, Rob will look after you there. You might have a bit of a waiting list now, so you might have to wait to, to get him, but... Uh, Check them out anyway, Road Sense in Kilkenny. Uh, so I hope I, I'm, there's probably more I'm forgetting, but I uh, just want to give those a shout out. Okay then, so Charles Koshy, is it? Hi Dan, I passed my test with your instructions, mentioned in your videos, really helped a lot, thank you. Well, you're very welcome, Charles. I guess my daughter will ask well again, Mahu, as I say in Irish, well done. You did very well there by the looks of it, and it's a great achievement to pass your test there, Charles. So well done to you, and thanks for your comment. Blessing, yes, you were very right. Thank you, Blessing, yeah. I think we were talking about being calm and all that stuff there. So, um, indeed, Blessing is, is better for the heart rate. Um, Karen Garvey, hi, Dane. Thank you so much for your videos. There's a tricky junction in my test location. Hard to describe, <clears throat> but it's got a continuous and a broken white line and a yield sign. Does the unbroken line mean you must stop, even though there's a yield sign? and not a stop sign you see it's a good question karen and i i'm not 100 percent sure to be honest with you but I, i'd have to see it first but i would say in that situation which line is closest to you like is if the broken line if the broken line is closest to you it's probably just a yield sign there could very well be a continuous white line after the broken white line but that that might not necessarily be for you that might be just to stop the other people from cutting in on your corner like you might see on a one-way street but um, if you're in any doubt, you're usually better off stopping anyway. But I, I suspect it might just be a yield sign there if it's if it's uh, the broken line. Because as I said, the solid line may not necessarily refer to you. But if you want to draw me a picture and send it to me on email there, daintai at gmail.com, I'd be happy to have a look at it. Or if you got a, sc a screenshot on Google or something like that, I'd, I'd have a look at that too. But thanks for that, Karen. Good question. Adex man, let's play ad. Hey. Dane, uh, let's, oh sorry, um, many thanks for your videos, just passed my, oh sorry, just lost that comment, now. hang on there, sorry, I'll get back to that, I think, he, I think he just passed his test he was saying, yes, just passed test last week actually, so well done to you, that's great news, and uh, thanks for getting in touch, really appreciate it, glad you found the videos to be a benefit to you, um, Fayaz Kwamar, I think, can I use sunglasses, <laughs> can I use sunglasses on my test, yes you can, no problem there, same with the lessons, if you need to use sunglasses, that's fine. No problem at all. Um, just don't be doing any mad head movements now. You know, like this, you you might end up giving yourself a, a crick in your neck. Um, just do, you know, the tester will know if you're checking your mirrors. You don't have to do any, you know, exaggerations. I say, but yeah, you can use your sun. You can use your sunglasses. Yes, there's no problem there. Um, 
Gurav Kishan, I think. Thanks, Dan, for your videos. Quick question. Is driving test started for non-essential drivers? Any idea how much is the wait time? Yes, it has been started for non-essential drivers based on when they applied initially. So they're first come, first serve. So if a non-essential person had a driving test like, you know, 12 or 15 months ago, they're, they're, getting, they're getting to them in the order that they initially applied. And hopefully they will get round to the non-essentials quicker as the summer goes on because more driving testers are being employed and more driving test centers are opening up. Now, as regards how the wait time, I'm not really sure. It does depend on the test center. But all I'd say to you is eventually they will get them uh, the waiting list down under control. It'll take time, but we just have to be patient. But yes, non-essential workers are getting their driving tests um, on a gradual basis based on when they applied. Um, Noah then, Noah Thomas Nyan, Nyan Q, test tomorrow. Best of luck to you, Noah. I know you've commented a good few times. You, you're a regular here, Noah, so the very best of luck to you. I hope everything goes well for you. Uh, hopefully I'll get it on the second go. Yeah, hopefully so. Um, and Gaurav is asking when did he apply and Noah is saying he applied for the urgent test yes, and this is all done on my road safety that I eat all that your driving test is managed there as I'm an essential worker so I was waiting three weeks so that's not too bad now yeah just you know three weeks is not, not, not a long time to be waiting for your test Alex Kretzen what's the difference between grade 1 and grade 2 how many of each are you allowed grade 1 is minor grade 2 is serious but not very serious but grade three is serious. So if you get one grade three, that's it. Test over, you're you're finished. Uh, no, sorry, you'll still do the test, like, but the, the grade three mark is a straight fail. If you get nine or more grade twos, that's going to be a fail. But if you get too many grade twos in the one area, that'll be a fail as well. The grade ones don't, don't matter overall to the overall result. But if you look at this report sheet here, you'll see that there was two grade one marks here on rules and checks and two on hand signals. So if this person had have got one more question wrong and one more hand signal incorrect, those grade one marks you see there would have evolved into a grade two mark. So the grade ones don't matter overall, but they do matter because if, they, if you get more than two grade ones, it can then subsequently be turned into a grade two mark. But they don't count towards a failure on their own but they could accumulate up into a grade two, if that makes sense. Um, Cameron McCabe, hey then, have my driving test tomorrow at 3.25. You've been a great help. Uh, thanks very much. My pleasure, Cameron, and the best luck to you in the test. Take it one road at a time. Uh, listen carefully to the tester. And, uh, you know, just have belief in yourself. You, you need to think about... Uh, the positive things like so I would say to you before you go into your driving test as you're waiting in the waiting area Think about the best reverse you did think about the best hill start you did think about the best time you did a roundabout think, think of all that stuff going around in your head Reaffirm to yourself all those positive things that you did at roundabouts at t-junctions at crossroads Okay, and the best luck to you Cameron Willie Hamo twice. I've been practicing reverse around the corner and twice the guard Gardy is it told me it was against the law and to stop even though I had my L plates up and had a full licensed driver with me um yeah that's one of those comments where I kind of wonder is it a serious comment or is he kind of trying to pull me leg or something um that just doesn't make any sense if if Gardy are telling you that it's against the law to reverse around the corner, I think you need to kind of go to go to the guardie and ask to speak with a sergeant or something like that. Now, unless you're doing it in a place that's not legal, unless you're doing it in a dangerous place, if you're start if you're reversing around the corner when there's a continuous white line on your right hand side, for example, that's not not allowed. But like you know, unless I'm unless I'm missing something there, it sounds like there might be some communication problems there. Um, but hopefully you'll be able to get over it anyway and hopefully it won't be a big issue for you going forward Luke Caffrey passed my test first time last week thank you so much for your helpful advice well done Luke I, that name rings a bell Caffrey actually I'm, I'm not sure if I was talking to you before or emailing you but well done to you great great achievement passing your test first time uh, and well done to you it's a great day for you 
Dylan Sheridan, hi Dan, my instructor tells me to not use any clutch when going around the corner and to coast around it. I understand I'm meant to go slow, but is there such thing as too slow? Yes, there is such thing as too slow. Um, you see, when you're reversing around the corner, you, you need to use your clutch, but you, you might not need to use your clutch if it's on the downhill leg. So you would have your clutch pressed in fully, on the, if you're reversing downhill, I mean. You have your clutch pressed completely in fully, and then you'd be just going on and off the brake like that to regulate the speed. But that's not going to work if you're on the flat or if you're going slightly uphill. Um, I don't know how you could actually reverse it on a corner without the clutch then. So I'm either I'm not understanding you or I think the instructor might be s talking about one specific type of corner. But coasting is absolutely fine when you're reversing around a corner or doing a turnabout because it's not necessarily called coasting. It's it's more so-called clutch control. So it's using the clutch to have good control on the reverse, for example. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, there is such a thing as going too slow. I, I, if you just think of like a normal walking pace that a human walks at, that's give or take the right speed to go on the reverse around the corner. Kind, kind of like a slow, steady walking pace. Um, if you go at crawling pace, that's probably a bit too slow, you know. It's all, you know, you have to think what's practical. Um, Carol, Carol 17, are you live now? Yes, I am. I hope I am anyway. I hope you can all hear me and see me okay. Um, yes, I am live now. Dylan Sheridan. Oh, we got, we saw, we dealt with Dylan, sorry. Um, Dane, I did my driver theory test and passed the first time, 37 out of 40. Well done, Carl 17. Um, that's great news. So that's his first step done. Now you have to get your eyesight report from a doctor or optician um, and then apply for your, wait, apply through the NDLS for your first learner permit and you can do you can apply online if you have a public services card and if you have a registered mygov id well done on getting your theory test that's step one out of the way uh good good achievement now now move on to the next steps now and hopefully you'll get your lessons and pass your test eventually Wojciech, dobra vietor i was just thinking like uh, the evening streams don't suit Wojciech because he, he seems to come in very late on them but Wojciech, good to have you dobra vietor um Wojciech's a regular to these uh, streams, so good to see you here, Wojciech. Michael Morkin again. Oops, sorry, lost Michael there one sec. Let me go back. Um, yep, yeah, haven't there now. The RSA are some shower. Can't call them. Yeah, I know what you mean. All my accounts are temporarily locked for the last three days. Can't get the, the retest. It's a pain. Can't type on this yoke as well yeah Jesus, it's all going wrong for you michael but yeah the rsa are um what can i say they're um they're an interesting shower all right yeah um my dealings with if i told you some of the stories i've had you you wouldn't believe me I, you, you could make a soap opera out of some of the stuff i dealt with honest to god you would not believe some of the stuff i've had to deal with with this this shower uh, for information, they just, it's almost like they're speaking in riddles. They, they don't tell you anything. As I said, I find out most things from other instructors, from a Facebook group I'm in. I might do a Google search of some things. Um, and they do, they, they, they do email certain things all right. Like, but very often, they could, ha they could bring in a new rule, they bring in a new thing, and they might not tell you about it for two or three weeks later, if at all. Uh, I know they're having staff problems as well, but... To be honest with you, most driving instructors would say they are a absolute nightmare to deal with. A nightmare. Block capitals nightmare, folks. And I'm not exaggerating, believe me. So Michael, Michael Morkin, trust me, me old flower, I feel your pain. Uh, the, only thing, the only good thing for you, Michael, is once you get everything sorted and get your test, hopefully very soon, you'll be more or less done with them. I'll still have to deal with this shower for the next however many years I do this job, you know, as will my driving instructor colleagues as well. Um, Chloe Byrne, hi then. When turning right at traffic lights, are you able to roll into the middle if there's cars waiting in the box to go straight? It, it, well, if you're going straight, hang on now. If if you're going straight, it shouldn't be in the box. But I would keep it simple here for you, Chloe. If it's a bigger traffic lights, you could roll in um behind the first car in front of you. But if it's a smaller set of traffic lights you're better off letting only one car in the middle. So just like if you're, like if, if there's already a car in the middle at a small set of lights, just hold back. 
but if it's at a bigger set of lights and there's room you should be able to move in then but it all depends on the on the junction you see it all depends on the, the set of traffic lights and um that's all like that's what i'd say to you there because like if, if if it's a small set of lights and you follow the first car into the middle and if that car ends up staying there then you could end up then being stuck on a pedestrian crossing or something like that which is not good for you whereas at the bigger set of lights you're less likely to be stuck on a pedestrian crossing um enigma 47 is it true you're hang on let me see who am i enigma 47 is it yeah is it true you're going on the joe rogan podcast first i've heard of it enigma 47 i don't even know who joe rogan is uh maybe i'm showing my age there um but no um not me anyway Wojciech Vrobel again here, male flower Wojciech. Do you think adding the red plus amber traffic light phase might help some learners move off faster at the lights, in particular learners and inexperienced drivers? Yes, I, I, I think that probably would be a good idea, Wojciech. I'm not sure it would make a huge difference to other drivers, but I think for learners, definitely, yeah. So in England, um, at traffic lights in England, the light will go a kind of an amber first before it goes green, um, to the best of my knowledge, and then it you know it's amber before it goes red anyway, and I think that's a great way because it kind of helps. I think it's good for learners as well because it just gives them that extra few seconds then to to move off instead of like going straight from red to green like it does here. That kind of bridge between uh, red and green is the flashing amber coming on. So I think Vojt, that that would be really good Vojtek, yeah if that would happen, and uh, it would make sense too because if people are driving in say i think i think it's in, in northern ireland it, it I, I presume it's the same in northern ireland so people are driving over the border between fermanagh and leitrim and monaghan and and uh armagh etc it, it would kind of make sense to kind of align them like that all right yeah so it's cert certainly a good idea um richard more music um roughly how many meters before signaling for a right or a left turn um about 50 richard Maybe a bit a bit sooner if there's no um other left turn or right turn. Maybe maybe a bit sooner again if it's on a big main road like a like a large national road. But you have to be conscious of other entrances and other roads. Okay, I wouldn't worry about driveways now; they're not important. But other roads and um other entrances, especially on, especially if you're taking a left turn, it's not too bad on a right turn. But on a left turn, you see they're they're on the same side as you, and if you indicate too soon, it could be a bad mistake there. So again, the, the bigger the road, the wider the road, the higher the speed limit, the earlier I'd say. And then more in town, probably the, just have to be a bit more careful in town not to do it too early. But as always there, um, who was it, Richard, was it? Uh, Richard, yeah, as always, Richard, it all depends on the situation. See, there's no kind of general one size fits all there because every junction is unique. Okay, folks, get, get to the last few comments here then. And I'll have a quick summary before we call it a day. Trace, trace car is it? Can you explain what should you do when you're behind a bus trying to stop? I know some, but can you explain in different situations? Well, it's you know it's it's uh, you're behind a bus, you're you're behind a bus trying to stop. Yeah, you know it's it's an interesting one. First thing I'd say is give him a bit of room because the more space you give the bus, the further forward you can see. Second thing. Watch out for slightly uh, dim-witted pedestrians who may try and cross in front of the bus. Now, most will probably not do that, but, you know, this is Ireland after all. And common sense doesn't always go hand-in-hand hand with pedestrian behaviour. So watch out for that. Um, also, watch out for the signals of the bus too. Like, is he signalling left? It means he's staying parked for the time being. But if he's signalling it right, the bus driver then is wanting to pull out or move out. So he usually bus drivers are very good with their signals they'll use them and they'll use them at the right time because they're more professional drivers than your average joe also if you do feel that you are safe to overtake don't put all your focus on the bus put equal if not more focus on what's coming from the front so is there cars coming are those cars going downhill are they going uphill if the cars are going downhill you may not feel safe overtaking if the other cars coming towards you are going uphill well then maybe you might have a chance to overtake and whatever you do, make sure you get your mirrors on the way out, on the right, and the left mirror on the way back in. Okay, But there will be the main things I say. It all depends on the situation. 
Owen Kinsler, for what reasons can a person overtake on the left? I only got one but couldn't find the others. So overtake on the left, if the person in front is turning right, if you're turning left up ahead, uh, as long as it's safe, and also if you're on a dual carriageway or a one-way street and the traffic in the right-hand lane is moving slower than the traffic in the left lane, they'd be the, the three main areas for overtaking on the left there. Do I have to use induce or emergency light when reversing around the corner or and turnabout? This is Q O S L X. Um <clears throat> you on the turnabout, you should definitely indicate right on the turnabout, okay? Indicate right on the turnabout moving out, but only at the start. Only at the start. You don't have to do it in the middle, and you might have to do it at the end alright if he's getting you to park up. On the reverse around the corner, your reversing light comes on, so there's no need to indicate on the reverse around the corner. But if you do, it's no problem, absolutely no problem. Just just use it if you want. Just remember, if you do indicate on the reverse around the corner, make sure to indicate right then when you move off. Don't get them mixed up. Um, Carl says, thank you and will do. Good man. Um, Nikita Francis, I'm so confused about the filter lights when turning right. Do I have to wait for the filter light to turn green, even if the other light is green and but people move even if the filter light is not green. We'll see if it's a full green light, Nikita Francis, this is. If it's a full green light, you don't have to wait for the filter light. So a full green light is like a circle shape, okay? Like like a round circle shape. Generally then, you if that's on, you don't have to wait for a filter light, for example, turning right. But if the if the filter light for straight is on, well then you can only go straight. You can't you can't go right on that. Um that would be the general rule there. But email me if you've any if, if, if that's still confusing you. Um you know, it all depends on the lights. All lights are gonna be different, you know. But people move, yeah, I I know what you mean. Yeah. I've videos on that too, so if you just check out my videos on traffic lights, you'll you'll see me explain that. Richard Moore music again. Uh thank you very much for your advice. Keep up the great thank you very much, Richard. I will do, and thanks for being here. And Wojciech, then most European countries have that red plus amber phase, which is where the light goes amber before it goes to green to help people know that it's going to be time to move off. Apart from Ireland, I know France doesn't have it. Some countries also have flashing green before the amber. Yeah, that that's uh, that's another good one, actually. Yeah, for example, Russia and I believe Austria. Anything like that, Wojciech, that's going to help learners. I think is a really, really, really good idea because one of the things I always find learners is they're always that little bit nervous about upsetting other people or delaying other people. So Wojciech's suggestions there about having the amber before the green and the flashing green, I think is an excellent suggestion. Thank you, Jinquia Barzo for that. Wojciech is a good idea. Certainly, certainly food for thought. Um, certainly maybe worth mentioning to the, to the RSA. And Nikita Francis says, thanks, you're very welcome, Nikita. I'm glad to help you. Okay, folks, I'm going to bring things to an end here now very soon. Evan Phelan here has sneaked in with a comment, though. I've just recently found your YouTube channel. I'm still studying for my theory, but I love your videos and tips in them. That's good, Evan. Glad to hear that. Um, let me know if you have any questions, Evan. Um, I will be back in a few weeks with another live stream. Um, I'll have a video this week as well on hazards, on reading the road ahead on hazards. So I hope to have that sh uh, Thursday or Friday. But I will have to, I will not be available for live streams for at least two weeks, folks. I'll be I'll be away in Kerry. Uh I'll be in Dublin next weekend. So anybody in Dublin next weekend on O'Connell Street, I'll I'll be around Dublin City Centre next uh Saturday and Sunday. And the following Saturday I'm gonna be in Kerry, <coughs> which is my uh third favourite county after Wexford and Cork. Uh so I'll be in Ballybunion and Kerry the following weekend. So I this will be my last live stream for about two, three weeks, okay? So I'll 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 I'm just referring to Evan there. If you want to email me Evan Day at gmail.com, I'd be delighted to answer any questions you have. And glad you find the videos useful. I'm glad you enjoy the tips and best wishes to you. And Darnell laughing then past test a few weeks ago. Your videos helped immensely. Thanks to me. You're very welcome, Darnell. That's a nice comment to finish on. And congratulations to you on passing your test. Okay, folks, so the signs, number one, the road signs on screen here. Number one is a clear way. Number two is no entry. Number three is a loop road. You often see that on big um, big roundabouts, like on intersections or at roundabouts on the M50, the Red Cow, all that kind of stuff. And number four is the rural speed limit sign. So it says that while the speed limit might be 80, you should drive at a speed that is suitable to the conditions and, bear, and be, be, bearing in mind that there could be bends or potholes and that kind of stuff. My PayPal symbol there as well, if you want to make any voluntary donations, that is much appreciated. 
no obligation obviously it's completely up to you um the entire gmail.com for any email questions or if you want me to look at your report sheet if you're sending me your report sheet let's you know be be um be generous with the information so let me know what you thought went wrong with the test let me know what the tester told you okay ndls.ie for any licensing queries if you want to apply online for your driver license um theory test.ie there to apply for your theory test and anything to do with managing your driving test myroadsafety.ie the rsa are not taking calls anymore uh, at least at least for the moment anyway everything is done on myroadsafety.ie okay um any other comments sneaked in there after evan Dermot, uh, oh, you got we got our Darnell. Sorry, Carol, t enjoy. Thank you very much, Carol. Seventy. I certainly, I certainly hope so. Two uh, D tools. Uh, how long is the wait for a driving test? If you're an essential worker, been waiting for a month now for Nace. Nace is busy. Nace is very, very busy. I would recommend you get in touch with Carol Woodsyal there um, from Kildare Driving Academy, KDA Kildare Driving Academy. Great people there. Um, Nace is one of the busier ones. Wexford's not too bad. Like. And some of the more rural centres wouldn't be too bad. If you're essential, it could be anything from three weeks, four weeks. It all depends on the on the test centre. You see, one person comes and that to, to fill out the essential emergency form and they had a test in three weeks. But somewhere like Nace and the Dublin centres can be very, very busy. It could be longer. I honestly, I don't know. It, it, it does depend on the centre. Um, ME then, can I use my car for the test? It's a Nissan Qashqai 151. My instructor is on it. Yes, you can use your own car, but you have to make sure that it's it's properly taxed, insured, NCT'd, <coughs> good tires, no warning lights on the dashboard, all that make sure it's in good shape. Um, we should be fine using your car for the test if it's roadworthy, ME, and the best luck to you. Okay, folks, so I want to say a big thank you to anybody who's supporting me out there. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for anybody that shares some information. Uh, I hope you found this live stream useful and beneficial. If you did, don't be afraid to give it a thumbs up and to share it with your friends and colleagues and family if they might find some use in it as well. I will be back later this week with a video on hazards, as I said, and I'll be out of action for live streams for the next two weeks. So I hope to be back towards the sort of the third week of August, maybe the fourth week of August with my next live stream, okay? So I want to say thank you again for everybody for tuning in and to anybody learning to drive, the best of luck, stick at it, take it one step at a time. Anybody with a test coming up, the very, very best of luck to you. And remember, passing or failing, it's all part of the journey. It's not the end of the journey, okay? So folks, it's been a pleasure, um, very enjoyable as always, and I will see you soon, okay? Take care and stay safe.